Hello and welcome to this episode of Dungeon Fog. My name is Guy and today we're looking at, well, we're looking at in this entire series, as a matter of fact, how to use story to design your dungeons in Dungeon Fog. Today we're looking at designing a prison cell within Dungeon Fog. Now we're not looking at the specifics of the prison cell as in what should and shouldn't be there. That's up to you to decide. What we are looking at, though, is how to make it narratively work for your players. In other words, how can your players get into this prison cell and then out of it without any difficulty? And to do that, we're going to use the power that comes with Dungeon Fog's multi-layered uh, design principles and operations. So I've got here a blank template upon which we will start to work. Um, so I'm just going to set my floor uh, style uh, at the moment. So let's go with... Um, we want this to feel like a really weird alien prison or just a regular kind of prison. I don't know. Let's go with grey floor tiles. No, that's what we're using for the background. This can often take a long time uh, to decide what uh, actual colour we're going to go with. I'm going to do that for there and for the walls. I'm going to do the dark steel plating. and I'm going to make my walls, uh, let's say, 10 thick uh, in, 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 in the design. Now, when we come to, to actually designing it, we're going to use this little tab here. And if you didn't see where I clicked, that was this tab here. Ah, that's this little stack here, layers and levels. We're going to click on that. We've got our stage layer. We don't have anything else to that yet. We'll, we'll, we'll work our way through it. I'm going to do a very simple um, design here. As uh, we're going to start down here. And we're going to say, right, this is the service. This 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 corridor leads to wherever. It leads out of the, the spaceship or out of this holding area into other corridors for the rest of the ship. So we're done with that. And so we now go in here and we're gonna call this, um, we're gonna call this main corridor. Press enter and it will accept it. Okay, now we're gonna do the actual prisoner facility. So I'm going three in, two up, uh, four along, two in. I always think hexagonal looks uh, much more interesting. One, two, three in, two down, come down some more in there and finish off there. Okay, great. There's our control room. Now to get into our control room, we need a set of double doors, which I'm gonna plonk quite firmly uh, there. Did I put them, did I select double doors? I think I did. So I'm, oh, I like to place, not necessarily off grid, but it doesn't, uh, it doesn't need to be on grid. I've got a bit of a plan for that. Okay, so we're gonna have some double doors there. Now we need the actual prison cells themselves. So I'm gonna take it off of this corner and run it out to there and say that it is a 10 foot wide corridor and just finish that up there we go okay so it's a 10 foot wide corridor and it's going to also have doors now i am very consciously choosing to put doors in here now the reason for that is because if it was an open archway which it is more likely to be guards who are stationed in here we'll be able to see down there. And we don't want that to happen. We want our players to have the capacity to run around and to do things, prepare for things that the guards can't see. Yes, they will have security monitors. That will be a problem for the players to overcome, but the guards can't physically see down the corridor. And that's the important thing. All right, and then this is going to be, um, let's say, uh, prison corridor. Great. Okay. And then all I'm going to do here is just finish off with some cells. So we've got, um, it'll be a four by four cell. How absolutely horrid uh, would that be? So there's one. There's two. There's three cells. Okay, and we're going to do the same thing on this side. 
Again, those red numbers just making it so much easier just to design the same thing. I could copy and paste these as well. I suppose that would be faster, probably better too, but I, uh, I'm done. So there we go. All right, so there's our three cells. We come to our doors. We've got bars here, so I'm going to throw some bars in when it lets me. Where are you? Uh, so I'll put some bars there. We'll put bars there. We'll put bars here and here. Did it put in there? There we go. And there and where is it? Where's my bars? There we go. Bars, 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 bars. Everywhere. Bars. All right. So there are the bars. This does not make for an easy escape. It really doesn't. I'm not going to go into to how to make it pretty. You certainly can do that, of course. So I'm not going to go into that. What we are going to do, though, is we are going to make sure that we are in our, um, our science fiction setting because here's your drop-down menu to choose between your different levels. I am on the subscriber-based uh, version. I know that if you uh, are not a subscriber, you get access to some things, not everything. Um, there is a link below this video, by the way, which uh, does get you a nice 10% uh, off if you use our promo code GREATGM uh, if you want to pick up a, a subscription to... to um, Dungeon Fog, and uh, as you can see, it does science fiction, it does Victoriana, it does steampunk, it does modern, it does fantasy, all of these wonderful maps. All right, so this is the key. This is what I wanted to add in here, very specifically, is I wanted to do, to, I wanted to do two things. One, I want to hatch, and I want them to know about the hatch as well. So I'm going to put one hatch here, because it kind of makes sense. It is an escape hatch. It's a hatch that leads somewhere. And then I'm going to put a sealed hatch, and they know that it's sealed. I'm going to put a sealed hatch there. Prison regulations state that every single area of a ship must have means to access the underground passageways in the, escape, in the event of an emergency. All right, now what I'm also going to do, because we've got all of these various hatches, is I'm going to come over here... And I'm going to put in place the warden's office. So that when I am running this adventure, I will make damn sure that my players get invited into the warden's office. So that they can go into the warden's office and they can see, hopefully, that there are these hatches which are linked. That's important, all right? So there are hatches that are linked. Then I'm also going to do, because it's a sort of standard, if you like, so that's what's happening there. The prisoners will need to have some kind of ablutionary facility. They'll need some kind of sanitary space. I'm going to throw that in here, and I'm going to close it off at roughly the same size. But this one uh, won't be bars. It'll be a passageway. So I'll put it there. So that passageway leads into this ablution facility. Now, uh, I think... I don't think... Fan, uh, no, it doesn't have it here. The ablution facility, I'm going to put a washroom sink in here just to represent that this is, this is a, a bathroom of sorts. Uh, and that's what can happen in here. And I think if I go to modern, and we're under, well, uh, that's a manhole. Okay, so we don't want that. We want, um, there we go, toilet seat. Great. Again, this is just so that we um, we indicate what the, the function is of this this space. Okay, so we'll do that and that. Uh, that's all we need to add here. I'm not going to put a bathtub in there. I don't think that they would be uh, allowing prisoners to, to, to have uh, baths. But it's enough because it allows us to then put in either another hatch if we wanted to. 
which I think the prisoners, the prison facility would go, no, listen, now we've got to be serious. We can't just put hatches in everywhere. It's, 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 it's a problem. But we can put in a drain, which could fit a small person. Okay. Again, it's about building in options for players to use to escape. Because remember, that's the goal, and we want to make it... We don't want to make it impossible, but at the same time, we want to make it actually possible. We want to give them a sense of hope that they can actually get out of this miserable place. All right, so that's what they've got to work with. That's what they've got there. Then what we're going to do, and I'm going to change up the flooring here so we know that this is something different. Let's go to that, okay, is we're going to have... These very narrow, as in five foot wide, because each of these each of these white grids is a five foot grid. What we're going to do is we're going to have these very thin, very narrow hatch entrance exit, whatever you want to call it. It allows for the maintenance people to get into the back to see what's going on, if they've got to replace fiber optic cabling or if there's damage or whatever, whatever the situation might be. And the important thing is that they're going to be linked together. Again, so that our players can do things um, that they can actually escape from from this prison. I'm going to run to here and then run out this way. So. It's about you deciding. Now, they might not ever discover these hatches or these walkways or these whatever you want to call them. But they might. And in that case, then you need to, to have a plan for them. Now, what I particularly like is that when I put them in here, and you'll see I'm not going to put them at every junction. Uh, I'm just going to put them where where I feel they would sort of put off choke doors and where they would be hidden. And this is one of the features that I wanted to show you. Is that um, they may not, you know, the, the, even the the operators themselves may not know that these doors are here. I know this one is an awfully silly one to put in here. But again, we've got to give our players a chance. Maybe they discover that there's Oh, they're secret hatches. We don't know what they are, but they're definitely out there. So what happens? Look what happens when I click on this doorway here. I have this option down here, which you cannot see because I'm in front of it. I'm really in front of it. I'm so in front of it that I need to go this way. <laughs> Do you see here? I've got a concealed option. Watch what happens when I turn that on. The doorway now has a red line around it because it's concealed. So what that means is, is when I'm exporting the map, I can export it in two different ways. I can export it for the players and I can export it for myself. And more importantly, is that with all of this stuff in here, okay, where we've got that little hatch, we've got that hatch, we've got this hatch, we've got that hatch. I was talking about layers. We can add in another level now. We can add in a level below, for example, where um, I'm actually not going to show the stage. I'm just going to, 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 to work on this level here that we are on. And let's call this the, the sewer level. All right. This sewer level, I can see where these hatches are. So I can then go, OK, so there's a hatch space here that leads into this square room, which is going to have a tunnel that leads, let's say, to a processing room and down. And then it's going to lead to this hatch over here, uh, over here, as a matter of fact, which is in another processing room that's going to lead up to this corridor here, which leads to this room here which leads to a corridor off there, which we don't know about. That'll be another map. And I'm going to finish it all down to here. I'm going to run a corridor down that way. Now, this is the other important thing, is that when you're designing maps, this is, this is potentially a starship. I will not design the entire starship 
um, in one map. It's just ludicrous. I'll design pieces of it. But because of the way that it works, we can line those pieces up fairly easily uh, without too much of a problem uh, at all, as a matter of fact. Um, so now I know this grid sits perfectly underneath my above grid, which, again, it allows me to then control things and do things exactly how I want and place holes and things going, yes, this leads from there down to here. This is how they could escape potentially. These are the things that they need to do. And you can hide these levels, by the way. So, you know, once we've kind of got our alignment, OK, great. I've hidden it. Done and dusted. Thank you. So it depends on what level we're working on as to what level you see or don't see, depending on your particular preference. So let's go back into our layers here. Let's go into our rooms here. I did not label these. I was very bad uh, when it came to labeling uh, these rooms uh, and these cells and things. What I wanted to just very quickly show you, and I know that this is becoming a very long video, but I am hoping it's going to be worth it for you. What I wanted to show you is that you should always save, uh, always, but then I wanted to go to GM Notes. Now, the reason why I wanted to show you GM Notes is because I think it's an incredibly powerful tool for you to remember stuff that you might have forgotten. So I'm going to drag this in here. Notice I drag it over the text. That will then bring in the unnamed level because I didn't name it. I was bad. Now, notice there are my doors in red that show those are hidden doors. We don't have access to those doors immediately. What I can then do is scrub down to, say, the bathroom level, drag that in here, and then note what Dungeon Fog adds in automatically. It automatically adds in passage to prison corridor. That's this little gap here. Single door to unnamed room hidden. It tells me these two doors are hidden. And then, of course, there's this passage to the unnamed room. If I had done what I should have done, if I had linked it correctly, then this would be revealed uh, as it should have been, that it goes to emergency exit corridor A, emergency exit corridor B. So that you can then link everything together. Now, there's the prison cells, which I haven't done anything with. I can drag in the control room. Again, where it's showing me those hidden links that I needed to know, as well as a hatch leading down somewhere. Now, I can come in here and I can, using all the text options I could possibly want, fill in whatever I need. Look at this. This is writing my entire dungeon module as I go. I don't need to go anywhere else to author this. And then, of course, I can print this out as a PDF, can't I? As it busy puts together the whole thing and, and, and builds it out quite nicely uh, for me. And there are various options that are going to be coming along with this. But what a wonderful feature. But have a look at have a look at the options that we've now had to create our dungeon map with secret corridors that allows our players to, A, they could try and find out about these secret doors, these secret panels that allow them to get into these systems, but that don't let them get out of the prison cell itself. They'd be able to sneak around and do stuff. Then there's hatches. These hatches, we now know, link down to this structure down here, which is not very pretty, because I didn't make it very pretty, but we know it links into this underground sewer, and off we go. It's as simple and easy as that. So, what are you waiting for? Go and get Dungeon Fog. Get creative. Get making. Until next time, happy map making. Thank you.